Okay, folks, it's demo day in Matrix Live. Welcome to the decentralized palace um, that is Matrix Towers. It is as much where I am as it is where you are. That's the beauty of decentralization. We have two demos for you today. Uh, Hugh is going to talk to us about um, QR code login backed by OIDC. And Timo, live, live from Brazil, is going to talk us through our uh, collaboration with Big Blue Button. So, Hugh, are you out there? Hi, folks. Yes, out here. Hopefully you can see me and hear me. Um, so I wanted to share uh, a new feature that the, the good folks element have been working on um, to make it super easy to get set up on an additional uh, element device um, from uh, with, without having, whilst also doing setting up the end-to-end -end encryption and other things like that. So what I've got to show you today um, is this is a, a build of Element X, um, and you see there's a new uh, option on here um, where you can say sign in with a QR code. And if you select this, um, get some instructions. It says open Element on a desktop device. Click on an avatar and click link new device. Okay, so I do have. An element desktop here. So, okay, so I'm already signed in here. Now, if I go to link new device, oh, magic, up pops a QR code. And if I go in here and scan it, ooh, something's happened. So, we've now set up a secure connection between what is my existing device on the left hand side and my element X on the right. And if I say enter these digits here to confirm that everything's okay. Now, so in this case, Neil mentioned that we're using, uh, this is based on the OIDC work, which I'll talk a little bit more about afterwards. Um, but I'm now within, this is within the matrix authentication service. So this is my identity provider that is actually asking me to confirm do I want to allow this new login. So I'm going to say yes, grant the access, and it's like, okay, I can close this here. And ta-da, I've now been logged in on Element X. If I go in here, I've gone straight in. I've got access to my rooms. I've got access to my history. Um, and I'm connected to my chat backup. So there's a secure message backup. My device is verified um, and is now fully ready to go. So the goal of this is to make it super easy to go from having one device to having a second device um, uh, set up and ready to go. Um, so this is built on top of um, the OIDC architecture, um, which is just an experimental feature, but is uh, getting used more and more. Um, and for, if you're interested in the nuts and bolts of how this all fits together, there's an MSC um, here that will soon be, it's currently draft, but will be um, made reasonably final. Um, and there's some, there's some nice things about this. So it is built on top of the OIDC mechanism, which provides a basic thing for doing QR, but actually we're not using that because in order to, pr to provide the end-to-end -end encryption that you get with Matrix, you can't just rely on the mechanisms that OIDC provides. You've actually wrapped up and provided a layer on top such that you're getting a truly secure connection between your two devices that the OIDC provider and the home server can't intercept and do any man in the middle attack on. Um, and it is that channel that is then being used to exchange and share the secrets for things like the chat history and the message backup and things like that. Um, so we also get some nice things out of it. And I can't show you this today, but the mechanism is actually built to offer something different as well, which is where if you wanted to be able to sign in, if your new device was the element web, um, and 
your element X was your existing device, this same mechanism would work. And you could actually use your existing element X device. You go into uh, settings in here and you, you would choose the link new device option in here, which would let you scan the code from your unsigned in element um, X device, I'm sorry, element web device, and um, uh, it would complete the process. And that's actually a feature that doesn't exist in that way across other non-matrix platforms as well. It's actually quite an unusual uh, feature that we can make that work in, in that way. Um, and so there's a kind of a massive amount of effort has gone into this over the last few months from a whole load of people because this actually touches all parts of the stack from the Element X clients, and I've changed the, Android, uh, the iOS client today, but that the feature is also available in uh, uh, Android. Um, Element Web obviously needs to support it on that side, and then there's new, some new server capabilities as well. Um, so if you're interested, go and take a look, and in the not too distant future, hopefully you can look forward to make it easy to uh, sign in on additional devices. This is the promised land. We've been yeah. talking about QR code login for seven years, six years. I, I think I might have done the first like UX thing in Figma years and years and years ago. It is insanely cool to see it actually working and being as polished as that and as Hugh says, it is terrifying that it hits every single bit of the stack absolutely everywhere, including all the new AI DC stuff. So I don't know, I think this is amazing. This is the shape of the future, everyone. Yeah, congrats. All right, Timo, are you out there? Yes, I am. So welcome everybody from Brazil. So I'm here with Paulo actually, and we did a one week sprint summit from the Victory Button team. And um, the, the main goal was that we have a proper Victory Button integration in Element Web. So the idea is that you can, yeah, similar to how we had it with Jitsi, you can create a call and it feels like actually starting a call, but um, you're just getting a widget with the blue button. And before there was one way to do this and that's over dimensions, which is now an archive GitHub project. Um, it still can be used, but um, it would be much more elegant if we can have this just as a standalone widget. And that's basically what the project was about. So I um, took a widget wrapper and that is doing all the authentication more or less directly with the um, with the BigBlue button server. And there are some indirections where you need um, a secret. So that's why um, it can't just be the big blue button's SPA. So there is some more trickery around it. And um, we achieved this. So if I press here, I get three options. Um, one is Jitsi, of course, um, that's still in there. Big blue button and element call. So if I press on big blue button, um, it's starting a full screen experience. And um, it's loading here. And we wait a little bit, and now we get into a full-fledged big button conference. And we still, of course, have our matrix chat on the right-hand side. Um, Timo, are you, are you sharing? It's conference. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. You're totally right. Um, luckily, there wasn't there wasn't that much to see yet. Um, so, okay, what what I did is I think I'll I step a little bit back, so I I leave this conference real quick again. So, like this. Um, so for now, what I did is I pressed this button up here, and then luckily it was literally just the talking part you always missed. And then pressed on the big blue button. Um, it's starting the widget, um, and inside the widget we'll see the full big blue button conference. We still have the chat on the right hand side, um, but we also have our full big blue button experience. And this gives us so many features from big blue button, like we have um, an amazing whiteboard you can draw on with multiple pages, um, and it's all synced with other members from the Big Blue Button Conference. Currently, it's only me. Um, and we have things like a poll, which you can start. And yeah, there are so many advanced features in Big Blue Button. Um, so whenever you do a conference, which is more advanced and more like a teaching environment than what you have in um, what you can do with Adam Call, this is an amazing alternative. And now it's fully built in, like everybody else would see the join button here and could just press join and also be part of the Big Blue Button conference. Um, 
but there's actually a little bit more, a little bit tighter integration. Um, and one part I'll talk about, and then the other part that's um, lots of Paulo's work, so then we'll give over to Paulo. But you can see that it's actually also communicating over the widget API um, <clears throat> that there's currently one member in here. And if we look at my, on my phone, um, I think, can you guys see my camera as well? Um, not entirely sure I'm holding it at the right position. But um, this is Element X, and this is the same room than what I have here. <clears throat> and we can see the join button up here because the conference started. And if I now end the conference, I leave the meeting, then um, it should eventually, I need to double check, um, update so I'm not, not joined anymore. Cool. So I think then I give over to Paolo what, what the real juicy parts are. Um, so you can yeah, start take over with, with the next, next bit of integration. Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, basically, over the last week, uh, we at Big Blue Button, we have been working on transitioning our uh, WebRTC stack. Uh, right now, we use MediaSoup and PreSwitch, and we are moving to LightKit. So basically, the work this week was to replace our, our media stack with LightKit, and we achieved a minimum viable uh, demo with LightKit working for audio and video. And so the cool thing here is that. Since we are using LiveKit anyways, uh, we are able to integrate with uh, Element all uh, in a more seamless way due to the matrix, RTC, semantics, and etc. So by implementing uh, a post message API on the button side, we can just uh, join the same conference on a LiveKit uh, SFU that is provided by the matrix uh, server, and then things just work uh, seamlessly. <laughs> If, uh, somebody can join a call in, on Element, and then somebody can join a call on Big Blue Button, and they will both see each other, even if they are on totally different clients. Yeah. So this is basically the last part of our demo. Um, I'll, I'll um, exit this. So I hope everybody can see this. So we are again in the conference. We can see in Element X that we are here, and I can press join. And this is normal native Element X running. Um, a native matrix RTC calling client, and we connect here, and we see that um, we also get connected here. So I have a interoperable big blue button, which now is basically inside Element Web. It's a matrix RTC native client, um, and it's interoperable with um, Element X, and that is super cool. So basically, if you are a big blue button user, you now have the option to, if you are not at your computer, just quickly use um, your phone and Element X with features like you can put it in standby. I mean, the video is now frozen and will turn off, but the audio is still working. That's really hard to show in the demo, but it is. Um, so you have an easy way to walk around with your headphones, join a big blue button conference, and you could almost think of the matrix RTC capability as an alternative to Zip. So it's also something where you have like a good um, calling device. And um, at Element, we really want to go much further with the calling. Like we want to do integration with CallKit and everything. Um, so it should become a good calling client, all in the future, but definitely planned. Um, and then we have, yeah, an amazing synergy with like a proper complicated client like Big Blue Button and a simple just listen only, view only client with Matrix RTC. And um, yeah, the way this is achieved, just like to give a little bit of technical insight, is that this widget wrapper is basically a Matryoshka matrix client. And um, we can even have this widget as a standalone thing, and it can still connect to matrix. Um, and then we have a very, very thin post message API between Big Blue Button and the widget wrapper. So Big Blue Button is just saying, oh, I'm connected, I'm disconnected. And then the matrix part is doing the state event and figuring out which is SPU to use and doing the key exchange and all those kind of things. So if I'm, if I'm leaving here now. Um, Sorry? Not yet. Oh yeah, the encryption we don't do yet. That is that is a big disclaimer. Um, but it would be the hardest thing in the world because Matrix would do all the complicated heavy lifting and key sharing, and um, Big Blue Button would basically just be provided with keys, and then it's just a little bit of LifeKit code to yeah, use the keys. Um, and as we could just see, I was ending the Big Blue Button meeting. It was sending a post message to the widget wrapper. The widget wrapper was properly updating our uh, Matrix RTC state, so it dropped down to one. And um, 
that implied that the widget had to be closed and we yeah have a pretty native experience if i press join here again i'm immediately back in the big blue button conference and um the the thing here should go back up to to one again uh, to two again once it's loaded so yeah that's a demo basically so interoperable big blue button matrix rtc that's the current state that's spectacular Woo! Yeah. <laughs> So, and this happened just in a week. Yep, that's totally awesome, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I don't understand. Aren't you meant to be like drinking Caprinias and <laughs> <laughs> having fun in Brazil, bro, but then doing a massive hackathon? Yeah, we actually got super lucky that Big Blue Button already had done, or I mean, Polo specifically had already done so much work on the live kit side. So, um, that part was already there, which is like the heavy lifting um, on the channel. And then um, it was mostly just hooking up our matrix RTC semantics. And I mean, we spent lots of time and they're just so yeah, abstract in a way and simple to use that there actually wasn't too much to do. Like we really just needed this tiny wrapper. And the cool thing is since I'm using the trash gang for the widget, I basically had all the SDK we built for element call available. So I'm, using the JS SDK. So I have all the abstractions, data has built with like matrix RTC sessions and join a session, leave a session, it all was there. So I could just reuse those pieces and then listen to post message API calls from the group button. And that's what really made this possible to yeah, be like much quicker than one would think for making big blue button matrix RTC compatible. Very nice. That's phenomenal work, and uh, Paolo, thank you for joining us and uh, sharing sharing your work. Obrigado. I guess that's probably the future of the phone network then. Like, between famously talking matrix RTC, us doing it, Big Blue Button now doing it, LiveKit obviously supporting it. I mean, this is starting to feel like it's got critical mass. Yeah, I'm, I'm also super impressed that we now have, yeah, this is actually something I want to mention, like it's even possible for a Fluffy Chat user to just join their Big Blue Button meeting if the teacher is starting it. So yeah, it's really, really getting to a place where it's kind of exciting. Very cool. All right, Matrix Live, never let it be said that we're anything less than all killer and no filler, two phenomenal um, uh, demos there for you. Adios. <laughs> Thanks.